Hello. In the e-lecture, generative grammar, we saw that any theory capable of producing well-formed sentences and rejecting ill-formed sentences is referred to as generative grammar. And a central component of a generative grammar is the phrase structure component. In this e-lecture, we will first show that there are several problems for simple phrase structure grammars. And we will then take these arguments to suggest two of the most popular variants of generative theories of language. Transformational grammar and unification grammar. These variants, which will be discussed in detail in a follow-up e-lecture, essentially have the same goals and share some common ground. Any generative theory of grammar wants to provide a structural description of all and only, that is, the grammatical sentences of a language. The simplest grammar would simply list all the sentences of a language. Such a model, however, could not handle any novel sentences. Thus, we need more complex grammars that involve at least two components. A phrase structure component, that is a rule component, and a lexicon that contains information about the words of a language. Such a model is referred to as a phrase structure grammar. Within more complex models of grammar, the PSG, the phrase structure grammar, functions as the basic component or base. Thus, a phrase structure grammar of whatever type constitutes the core of any generative grammar. Let us look at its component in more detail. The phrase structure component of a phrase structure grammar consists of a set of symbols, that is, the syntactic categories. Here you find I bar, adjectival phrase, verb phrase, determiner, noun phrase, and so on and so forth. Well, and then, secondly, it consists of a system of rules, a system of phrase structure rules. With this rule system, and here I have chosen a fragment of the so-called X-bar system, which is by no means complete, but I will use it for illustration purposes. With such a rule system, we can generate several sentence hierarchies. Let us look at two of them. In this first example, all rules have been used. And here is the resulting hierarchical representation step by step. Rule number one expands the inflectional phrase IP into two branches, noun phrase and inflectional or I bar. The noun phrase is expanded into an optional determiner which has been used here and N bar. These little deltas, by the way, in the terminal nodes are placeholders for actual words that will have to be added later. Rule number three expands N bar into just a noun, the adjectival phrase, which is optional, has not been used here. Rule number four expands I bar into the inflectional component and the verb phrase. The verb phrase is expanded into verb bar and verb bar is finally expanded into verb the optional noun phrase, which could be part of a verb phrase, is not used here. Alternatively, you can also present such a tree by means of a lisp. And believe it or not, there are several people who prefer such a list, especially programmers, who find that this representation is more explanatory than a tree that I have illustrated over here. A reasonable sentence using this structure could be something like the child passed sleep, that is, the child slept. Let's look at another example. In this example, again, all rules have been used, but here rule number two has been used without the determiner option 
And rule number three has been applied twice. In the subject noun phrase without the optional adjectival phrase and in the object noun phrase with the adjectival phrase. And here is a result. A suitable sentence could be John likes cold milk. By the way, the use of phrase structure rules has a long tradition with various milestones. If you're interested, consult my e-lecture Phrase Structure 1 for details. Let us now turn our attention to the second component of a phrase structure grammar, the lexicon. Now, the lexicon contains the information about the words of a language. In its simplest form, it pairs lexemes with grammatical category, a set of determiners, a set of adjectives that occur in an adjectival phrase, nouns and verbs. Let us illustrate how then lexical insertion works. Here is a sentence structure that can be the result of the application of some of our phrase structure rules. By means of a simple lexical insertion principle, we can now match word classes with the terminal nodes in the tree. For example, we could have a sentence such as, we could have a sentence such as, this old boy slept. A wonderful sentence. But as an alternative, we could also generate sentences that sound extremely odd. Some would match the determiner insertion principle. Strong. House. Shouted. And you will possibly agree that such a sentence is ungrammatical. So such strange cases have to be avoided. And any promising theory of grammar needs a more sophisticated lexicon and more elaborate lexical insertion principles that do more than just match word classes with terminal nodes. But even though there is agreement about the necessity of these two components, that is phrase structure, rule component and lexicon, there are considerable differences in the precise formulation of the rules and constraints involved. The following problems, for example, cannot be handled by means of simple phrase structure grammars. There are sentences where intuitively adjacent constituents are separated. So x2 really belongs to x1, but somehow, sometimes it can be represented as a sort of final element, in which case branches would have to cross. Not a very nice situation. And then there are sentences where the internal relations between the constituents cannot be shown. So how are these sentences related? John ate a cake versus what did John eat? They're related very much. One is a declarative sentence, one is an interrogative sentence. But how can we show these relationships? Well, and then there are sentences whose logical structure is not really clear. There are sentences where the subject noun phrase relates to a verb that is not its adjacent verb, but a verb that is more embedded within syntactic structure. Let us look at these phenomena more closely. The first phenomenon concerns a construction such as John took out Mary. It contains a phrasal verb like take out and take out can be normally represented as a cohesive constituent. Take the particle out and then a noun phrase Mary. Quite nice. But what if the components of a phrasal verb are discontinuous in as in John took Mary out. Well here, take and out can no longer be represented by means of a simple tree. This would be a result now. However, this result 
clearly violates a condition or it should be an example where we should allow branch crossing but branch crossing is not a very nice solution. So this problem that has traditionally been referred to as the discontinuous constituent argument can only be solved by extending a simple phrase structure grammar. Or take the following example. Intuitively there is a relationship between a declarative sentence and its interrogative counterpart. John eat meat or John ate meat? Well, let's first of all insert the nodes. John past eat meat. Now we can easily transform, transform this into a question. John ate what? So this would be some sort of echo question. But how can we convert this sent to sentence into a real question? For example, into a W8 question. Well, in such a case, we would have to move what somewhere to the beginning of the sentence. An enormous problem for a simple phrase structure grammar. Here is another example. In sentences such as John seems to read. John is clearly the grammatical subject of the verb in the main clause, but it's not its logical one. John does not seem in any way. Logically, John is the agent of to read because it's John who reads and not, it's not John who seems. But how can we handle this relationship between the grammatical relations that are represented well in John seems to read versus the logical or the thematic relations that are represented in the second version. Well, a phrase structure grammar cannot explain these discrepancies between grammatical and logical subject. Another example concerns cases of structural ambiguity. In sentences such as, the chickens are ready to eat, a simple phrase structure grammar would have to show the differences in meaning via two syntactic trees, which I show here as two different embedded clauses. In the first case, where the chicken eat themselves, the embedded clause exhibits the chickens as the subject of eat. The chickens are ready for the chickens to eat something. And in the second interpretations, the chickens are ready to be eaten. Well, here, the someone eats the chickens and the relationship in the embedded clause clearly shows that now pro, an external element, eats the chickens and here the chickens are the object of the embedded clause. Well, a phrase structure grammar cannot handle this phenomenon suitably unless we expand it. So what can we do in order to solve these and further problems. The solution involves the following alternatives. For example, we could expand the phrase structure component. Our suggestion number one. An alternative could be that we expand the lexicon. Our alternative number two. Or a third alternative would be that we introduce an additional rule system here marked and labeled as number three. In fact, variants one and two are favored by the class of unification grammar, here abbreviated as UG, unification grammar. And the introduction of an additional rule system is the solution that is represented in transformational grammar, the standard abbreviation TG. These are the two alternatives which we will discuss in detail in additional e-lectures. Now let's briefly look at the main suggestions. In 1957, Noam Chomsky suggested the use of an additional root system, transformations, as a possible solution to the phenomena that could not be handled by a simple phrase structure grammar. A transformation is defined as a rule which requires a sentential input. Now, 
Here's now the input. It's not only an output of the base, but it's also the input to a new component. And the input is not just one symbol, but a sentence. And then it generates a sentential output. So here is now the new output of a transformational grammar. Over the years, the system of transformations which constitutes the central element in transformational grammar has undergone numerous revisions. The central idea, however, has always been the same. After an initial string has been generated, it undergoes some change due to the application of additional rules. A widespread class of linguistic formalisms are those that are subsumed under the head uh, under the term unification grammars. One essential ingredient of these formalisms is the complex formal description of grammatical units, that is, words, phrases, sentences, by means of features or feature value pairs. They share a highly formalized uniform operation for the merging and checking of grammatical information, which is commonly referred to as unification. They do not use any kind of transformational rule. Rather, they differ in the organization of their components. Some unification grammars strengthen the phrase structure component, others emphasize the lexicon. Well, this e-lecture is introductory in character. Its main goal is to set out some general principles that underlie the most well-known grammatical formalisms and to provide arguments why simple phrase structure grammars cannot handle all sentences. With additional components or the expansion of existing components, however, we have at least two options to solve these problems. The resulting models, transformational grammar and unification grammar, will be discussed in additional e-lectures. So, see you there.